is it? Bum, ba, da, ba. You're locked into the flagship, an Ole Miss podcast powered by College Corner. Here we go. One, two, three. Get your daily Rebel sports fix at the Ole Miss Spirit, omspirit.com. Welcome into the flagship Wednesday edition here. I'm your host, Zach Barry. It's been a minute since we've done a solo show, so I figured what better time to do a uh, recruiting AMA as National Signing Day is inching closer and closer. Um, we're less than a month out, um, way less than a month out, as uh, the early signing period is December 4th through the 6th. So Ole Miss is not only – trying to make this college football playoff run a reality, but uh, also trying to uh, land as many top-tier prospects as it can. But before we get into the questions, do want to remind you, this show each and every day is brought to you by our good friends at College Corner. Three locations, Oxford, Ridgeland, Flowood. Go check them out if you can. Brick and mortar, if you cannot, check them out, collegecornerstore.com. Show is also brought to you by our good buddy Drew Moak and USA Benefits Group. It's Medicare enrollment season. If you're looking for a Medicare supplement plan or you just need a regular health insurance plan, give Drew a call 601 953 8449 or check out his website, quoteswithdrew.com, and get your free quote. I've already taken care of my enrollment. Drew can help you take care of yours. So he's working around the clock, he's been busy. But uh, he wants to ensure his clients are in the best plans for them. All right, let's get to the questions. I put them on the board at omspirit.com. Come join us. Only a dollar for the first week. And after that, half off an annual subscription. Scott P21 asks, high school offensive line recruiting has seemed to be missing the last few years and really up until the last two weeks. Do you think Lane has put an NIL focus on it? Or do you attribute it more to winning? Maybe a combination of both. Um, it's probably a little bit of both, to be honest. I, I think that, uh, the, the winning certainly helps. I mean, honestly, the win over Georgia, uh, the momentum was in- immediately palpable. I mean, just talking to people around the program, talking to recruits, talking to, uh, different people in the industry, uh, Ole Miss was the buzz for the last week and a half. Um, not only beating Georgia, but whipping them, uh, was, was was impressive. I mean, obviously you get your first 2026 commit and then you flip Dante core, Caleb Cunningham and Devin Harper, all three sec flips, which I, impressive Auburn, Alabama and LSU. I mean, probably outside of Mississippi state, your three biggest rivals in the sec. Uh, so that was, that was huge. Um, NIL focus. I, sure. Maybe. I mean, the NIL focus is for, uh, you know, the four stars and the five stars for sure. I mean, the three stars will get something, but um, it's hard to recruit elite offensive linemen, whether it's high school or the portal. They're expensive. Um, I mean, I noted in the story about Devin Harper, uh, that's the highest rated offensive lineman since uh, Greg Little, nine years. Greg Little was a five star. Um, got him out of Texas, another out of state guy. Uh, so it's hard. It's difficult because there are good offensive linemen from the state of Mississippi. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I went through the um, the recent ones in, in, in recent memory, and two of them were from the state of Mississippi. One was essentially local Memphis, Michael Orr, uh, Javon Patterson, Rod Taylor, and then the other one, Austin Golson, was, uh, was from Alabama. But um, – But, yeah, I mean, a lot of programs have that built-in advantage where their state produces a lot of offensive linemen. It's not an excuse. It's just kind of how the, you know, athletic demographics work. I mean, Mississippi typically churns out skill players and um, defensive linemen historically. uh, And it's just hard. And I think it just mostly comes down to price. Elite offensive tackles are expensive. It's hard. I do think that Ole Miss is probably going to focus more on that. I think Lane would probably tell you that. Um, Not only just, of course, it's good to have an elite left tackle or right tackle. Duh. But you look at this year, 
just injuries, just getting banged up, you know, just getting dinged here and there week in, week out. It, it piles up and, and it hurts and almost had to shuffle its offensive line a lot. Uh, I think you could probably point the Kentucky game, the LSU, the two losses. Uh, Ole Miss was banged up on the offensive line and, and struggled. So um, probably a combination of both, Scott. I think just NIL and, 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 and the Grove Collective continue to, to churn and burn and, and doing well. And then winning, being eight and two, you're now nine in the college football playoff rankings. So that doesn't hurt to be nationally relevant and to be honestly one of the teams that people think can win it all. Uh, Adley Rushman, uh, the uh, professional baseball player, asks, who is this year's Walter Nolan? Also, any chance that Walter Nolan stays for 2025? Uh, I would be incredibly shocked if Walter stayed. Uh, I don't think that that will happen. Um, he's had a tremendous year. Uh, he has not even been a hundred percent per Lane Kiffin. He's been kind of banged up. He had the ankle. He's been hobbling a little bit. Uh, and he's still just dominated and mauled people. Um, and you know, it's re what's really helped Walter is everybody around him. Everybody around him is better. So it helps him get one-on-ones more. Uh, people still double him most of the time. And that frees up everybody else. But um, with J.J. Pegues, Xavier Harris, Aquilo Stone, uh, Chris Hardy, Prince of Umami Ellen, uh, Centarian Perkins, uh, Jared Ivey, like the whole D-line being good helps him get more one-on-ones and be more effective. Um, who is this year's Walter Nolan, as in somebody from the portal? It's too early to tell. Um, I mean, probably Jaheim Otis. I mean, that's the easy one, the easy answer. He's already, you know, informed Alabama, filed the paperwork. He's getting in the portal. <clears throat> Talked to some people at Alabama. They said that Ole Miss was the favorite. You know, I, Pete Golding recruited him since he was in seventh grade. So I would be shocked if he doesn't return home and play for Ole Miss. Um, that's probably the easy answer. Um, if you're looking at a guy that's currently on the team, that maybe takes that next step. Uh, I'd probably say Jam Brown or William Eccles. They've played a, a good bit this season. Jam Brown has really flashed, and um, Eccles has as well. So those two guys in the middle, Randall Joyner in that in that room, are in good hands. Um, I just talked to uh, JBL29, asked for Jaheim Otis update. Just gave you that one. Uh, any update on Jared Smith? Um, I know there, there was a, another site, uh, our buddy David Johnson put in a uh, crystal ball pick for Jared Smith to choose Ole Miss. I talked to the people over at um, Gamecock Central, the, the South Carolina on three site. Um, I think it's a little early for, for a prediction here at this point. Um, I put out a couple of Intel pieces earlier this week. And the sentiment I'm getting is Auburn still holds the edge, but South Carolina and Ole Miss are really pushing. Um, he really likes what Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks have got going on, and you, you see what they're doing with Kyle Kennard and, uh, and Dylan Stewart. It's what's not to like? And then you look at Ole Miss. Just talked about it. The loaded defensive line, number one in the country in sacks, number one in the country in tackles for loss. Um, so a very compelling case for both. Uh, it's hard to get a kid from Alabama to come out of that state if Auburn and or Alabama want them. I still lean Auburn, but uh, let's see what he does next week. Uh, he's going to be back at Auburn this week, but the Iron Bowl will be in Tuscaloosa. So will Jared Smith go to the Egg Bowl? Uh, you know, that's something to, to think about, you know, because Auburn will be on the road. So he could be looking to go to uh, a game. South Carolina's on the road at Clemson, so can't go back to Columbia. So maybe he shows back up in Oxford. He was there for Georgia. I talked to him. I, I've mentioned it plenty of times. He, he's not. He's not a very, not a very talk, uh, talkative kid. He's, he's very quiet, very reserved. But um, you know, I talked to him. He was he was excited for the game. He was excited to to see Coach Joyner again and, and talk to Kiffin and, and Golding and everybody. Um, so yeah, I, I'd still lean Auburn, but, but Ole Miss and South Carolina are going to, going to make it tough down to the wire. Um, over under on how many four or five star kids Ole Miss ends up flipping between now and signing day. 
Um, again, I, I put out a couple Intel pieces. You can see those at omspirit.com. Again, it's, it's premium content. So if you're if you're not uh, a member, again, a dollar for the first week, just just give us a seven day trial. Give it a go. And then you get your uh, if you like what you see, you like what you're reading, you like the content, you get 50 percent off your first year. Um, right now, I would probably say at least two. Um, a little more leaning towards Tyler Miller than Deuce Knight. Um, I think Deuce is, is really torn. Um, not only just with like the relationship, he likes both staffs, you know, Hugh Freeze and everybody at Auburn's done a great job recruiting him, but Ole Miss has done the same. Ole Miss has been after him for two years, almost two and a half years. And he's tight with, with Charlie Wise, Kelvin Bolden, Kiffin, Pete Golding, everybody. Um, Fisher Ray, another guy, the staff, he's an analyst. He's, he's done a really, really nice job, just not only with the recruiting in general for this class and, and helping Kelvin coordinate and, and do all that behind the scenes, but um, he's done a nice job as well with, with Deuce. But I, somebody told me it was a coin flip. I've had people tell me it's 50-50. Again, let's see what he does. If he, if he shows up for the Egg Bowl again, I think that, it, that that's a sign that Ole Miss is really in a spot to make a move. But, yeah, I would say, too, like Jared Smith, again, like I said, going to be tough. Um, still don't know what Mario Nash is going to do. You know, he put out the tweet that he was still committed, but his position coach is gone, and Florida State is really struggling. Um, be really keeping an eye on him. And then Tyler Lockhart, I still don't really know. I mean, he he's shown some interest, but he's got a visit. You know, maybe he shows up for the Egg Bowl. He's committed to Mississippi State, so maybe he takes a, a trip for that. Um, he's really been keen on trying to get back to a state championship game and, and win a a back-to-back -back title. So he's he's kind of put recruiting on the back burner. But, yeah, for now I would say two. Um, but, you know, there's always there's always some kind of surprise at some point. So you never know. Uh, are there any dark horse names out there as far as recruits go? Um, people always want to know about the secret, the secret recruit. Um, this is from Darby Dimes asking any dark horse names or people we may have a chance with and no one is factoring them in right now. Um, I'm sure there is. Um, yeah, people around Ole Miss are, are pretty buttoned up right now, mostly because of the focus on the season and trying to get to the playoff. But you get closer and closer to signing day, people are, are, are talking less and less. I, as of now, I don't know of any dark horse names, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I – I'll just say I don't know. I'll just be honest with you. I, I don't think as of right now there is, but there could be. There typically is someone that pops up around signing day that that Ole Miss has kept it under wraps for for a hot minute. So we'll see. Um, the one, the only one, two, two asked. Uh, you know, asked you previously about the chances. Offensive line hall of Harper, Nash, and Miller. Um, you said getting all three would be unlikely based on the intel you have now. What are the odds uh, to get all three? I think you're probably going to get two. Again, I, I think a clean sweep of, you know, Devin Harper, Mario Nash, and Tyler Miller, that's tough. But, I mean, it's not its not like it's crazy or out of the realm of possibility. I mean, they're, you know, Harper's already committed. He's the out-of-state guy. Nash and Miller are both Mississippi guys. So, um, sure, it, it, it's not crazy at all that both of them decide to stay home. Uh, Caleb Cunningham flipping was big for Ole Miss, not only just to get a five-star possible day one contributor, but he he carries a lot of influence in the state. He, he has some clout. Um, a lot of guys are friends with him. They like Caleb. And like I've always said, elite guys want to play with other elite guys. Um, so that doesn't hurt Ole Miss at all to be able to point to that five-star in the commitment class. Um, I still would say two out of the three. I don't know if they're going to get all three. Um, Recon Rev, how many do we look to sign in the early signing period? Um, right now, I believe Ole Miss is at 22, 21, 21 right now. Um, I would say probably around 26. I don't think it's going to 
get up to 30 at all. I mean, that would be nine more commitments. I mean, I think they're looking at probably at least three to four more, um, maybe five. So you're getting around 25, 26. So I think that's fair to, to that's a solid guess. Um, could be, there could be some surprises. It could be a couple dudes um, that jump in. I, I don't know if anyone is going to be, you know, processed, dropped, whatever from this class. Um, and I haven't heard any issues about grades or anything like that. I think everybody's good as far as the current commits. So, yeah, I'd say probably 25, 26. Um, what positions emphasizing in the portal? Ben and I talked about this yesterday on Talk of Champions. Uh, I think it's definitely going to be quarterback, depending on what Walker Howard does. And then I think Ole Miss is going to want to add at least one running back, at least one to two receivers, and then probably going to try to add an impact offensive lineman. Uh, I think they're probably going to try to add at least one or two defensive linemen. And then probably just kind of one to two across the board at each position. I mean, I think they're going to emphasize everything. Giffen's big on just getting as much talent as you can and just building competition. That, that culture of competing every day in practice, that, that was big for Alabama for so long. You know, guys talk about that a lot in recruiting. Or, hey, I, I chose to go to Alabama or I chose to go to Georgia or Ohio State or you know, Oregon, wherever, you know. I want to go there because I know I'm going to go against dudes every day in practice. I know I'm going to go against a four-star and a five-star every day. It's going to make me better. So Kiffin's trying to do the same thing. So I think they're going to emphasize everything. You know, linebacker probably add at least one. Uh, you, you get TJ Daughtery back. You get Suntarian Perkins back. Tyler Banks will be back. Maybe Pooh Paul comes back, depending on what kind of grade he gets from scouts in the NFL. And then um, secondary, probably going to try to do the Trey Amos thing again. Try to get a lockdown corner. And then safety, um, you know, you're going to lose a lot of veterans back there on the back end, so you got to add somebody there. So, yeah, they're probably just going to look at adding across the board. Uh, JD124, what are the odds that Caleb Odom enters the portal? Um, you know, there was the stuff on, on, on Twitter where I, I believe he was retweeting some pretty critical things about the offense or something. Um, it's a peculiar fit at Alabama with just kind of what he does. Cause he's, he's a bigger, more physical wide receiver, in my opinion, like he's not a true tight end. Um, he hasn't gotten a ton of PT he's playing. So it's not like he's just sitting on the bench and, and not doing anything. He's still playing, but probably not as much as he would have liked. Um, and honestly, I think that he was probably a little ticked off with saving retiring. That was a big part of why he chose Alabama. I mean, he was pretty much all Ole Miss up until Alabama gave him the offer and then really pushed for him to come to Alabama. So Saban dipping out right there after the early signing period when he signed probably didn't jive too well with him and his family. Uh, we'll see. I, I do think if he does get in the portal, um, Ole Miss would absolutely be involved. Um, no doubt about that because Ole Miss wanted him bad, and, and they could certainly use another physical athletic tight end to go with Daquan Wright and, and Dylan Hip, And, uh, you know, they got Hayden Bradley in this class, so they're, they're going to try to add some more athleticism to that room. So I wouldn't be shocked if, if he were to get in the portal that uh, Ole Miss would go after him. But right now, the odds, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's still up in the air. We'll, we'll see. Um, Change Up asks, do we have any interest in – uh, Mitchell, the former Alabama safety that's committed to Mississippi State, um, referring to Tony Mitchell, played at Alabama, you know, has a relationship with, with Pete Golding. Um, you know, he was uh, he was one of those that I couldn't confirm if he arrived at the Egg Bowl or not. He was on the guest list. I didn't see him on the sidelines, but Ole Miss is, you know, inviting him back. So there's definitely some interest there. Um, if you're looking for a, I guess, a, you know, a a mystery recruit or somebody that you don't expect. That's another four star that that could pop up. Um, you know, committed to Mississippi state, uh, you know, what's, what's that, what's that program going to look like in 2025? Are they, are they getting rid of defensive coaches? Are they getting rid of a coordinator? You know, does Tony Mitchell really care about that? Um, I, I would say yes. I mean, I don't, I don't think you're just picking Mississippi state out of, you know, merit for the program or anything. And so, 
uh, that Pete Golden connection is, is certainly something to keep an eye on. So yeah, I would say Ole Miss has some interest, but we'll we'll see in the next couple of weeks how much interest that is. Um, Grove Crew asked about a linebacker named Kashama out of Georgia, um, saying that an, another site said that Ole Miss had offered. It's his only P5 offer. Um, I would think that they're referring to possibly, as I'm going through here on the uh, on the old internet, efforting here live on the pod. Um, I have not heard that name. Um, and just kind of looking through the database here, I don't see anyone with that name. Um, and then if I do a quick Twitter search here, um, yeah, I'll have to look that up and and get back to you on that one. Um, it could be, I just found a guy here, Elijah Kashama, possibly. Yeah, it looks like Ole Miss offered him November 18th. Um, so yeah, this week. I missed that one. So shout out to uh, to Grove Crew for uh, pointing me in that direction. Um, it looks like that I could probably reach out to a couple people and, and engage some interest there. Um, yeah, I mean, he's got offers. It looks like he's got offers from Navy. Um, and Ole Miss is pretty much what it looks like here. Um, looks like he's from Georgia, so that could be somebody to keep an eye on. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll double check on that one. So, um, yeah, I've not heard much about him. Could be somebody. I mean, again, you know, the, these things tend to, uh, work themselves out in the end where guys kind of pop up late in the cycle, uh, with some senior film evaluations where Ole Miss pulls the trigger on an offer because, hey, we, we like what we see on film, so let's uh, let's give it a go. Um, grown man Reb asked about offensive line uh, eligibility. As uh, Ben mentioned on the show yesterday, that the uh, offensive line, most of them could come back. Um, I'm going to do a quick look at the roster here. Ben said that uh, yesterday. Obviously, Jaden Williams will be able to return. Um, and then you've got uh, the Washington guys, Julius Buello and uh, Nate Calipo. Um, those guys are seniors. I would imagine that they potentially have a COVID year, if I'm just going off what Ben said. Um just kind of looking at uh, their roster page here. You can't really look at like game logs or stats because they're offensive linemen, but uh, I would imagine a COVID year is at play there. Um, you know, obviously the other guys on the line that are probably not coming back, you know, Caleb Ramsey or Caleb Warren, excuse me. Um, but yeah, like Reese McIntyre will be gone, but then like a Pettis is a junior. Um, Diego Pounds is a junior. Uh, Jerk one Scott, I believe, has a COVID year, um, but not 100%. Eli Acker will be gone, but uh, I think they'll be excited. Uh, Jeremy James, um, he will be out of eligibility as well. So they'll be looking to, to replace a lot. And, you know, I think it'll be a uh, time for guys like Bryson Sanders to step up. I, I fully expect him to compete for the center job next year. Um you know, somebody like John Wayne Oliver, it'll be his second year in the system. Um, big physical guy that Ole Miss was excited about when he signed. Uh, you got to get him in there and in, in the rotation and get him working. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think they're definitely going to hit the portal just to look for some experience and some guys to compete in that room to just make everyone better. You know, Preston Cushman's another guy. Got to get in there and, and get busy. Got to got to get after it. So, um be looking to bring some pieces back and then also to add to it. Um, so that'll be something to keep an eye on as well as uh, we'll, we'll get more clarity on the portal here in the next couple of weeks when regular seasons are done and guys will make a decision to go ahead and put their name in the portal before, uh, you know, their teams playing a bowl game or a conference title game, or, you know, maybe a college football playoff game. You never know. So, uh, so yeah, 
that's going to do it for this uh, this flagship AMA. Shout out to everybody on the board for uh, submitting the questions. We'll have more recruiting coverage coming to you as uh, the week progresses towards Saturday where Ole Miss takes on Florida in the swamp, 11 a.m. on, uh, I believe that's ESPN. And um, I, I did see that somebody said that it is the 4K game. Uh, it's on ABC, so SEC on ABC. Uh, so 4K. So if you got 4K, it'll, it'll look good. So uh, Ole Miss looking for win number nine. And uh, to keep pace with everybody else in the college football playoff, uh, we'll have our picks out and everything. And then tonight we will record Hit That Line. So I will uh, I will reveal my take on this game this evening when we record that. You can listen to it on Thursday or Friday. Um, you know, maybe you're driving down to Gainesville. Uh, maybe you're, you know, on a plane to Gainesville, you can fire up the the podcast and and get ready for the weekend. As uh, look, the fellows look to stay hot, and we are 178 and 121 against the spread this season. Um, we had a pretty solid week in Week 12, um, 13 and seven against the spread. Uh, yours truly hit another money line, Arizona State plus 280. Uh, Sun Devils. Eight and two as well, so good for uh, good for Kenny Dillingham and the folks in Tempe. But uh, we'll have a lot more content coming to you, more podcasts, and um, again, stay locked in at the site. If you're not a member, if this is just something that you listen to every week, uh, we encourage you to join. It's a dollar for the first week, and fifty um, percent off your annual sub after that. If you want to give a couple shout outs before we get out of here? Roback.com, go check them out. And uh, when you uh, snag any merch, whether it's for yourself or for Christmas or whatever, use promo code JUICE and you get 20% off. And then, of course, our friends at Homefield Apparel, homefieldapparel.com. Use that promo code LASTDANCE24 and you get 15% off your first purchase. Uh, you know, when you're getting your Ole Miss merch or, you know, maybe something else for somebody for Christmas, um, use that promo code and you get 15% off. So, Appreciate College Corner. Appreciate Drew Moak and USA Benefits Group and the rest of the sponsors that bring this show to you each and every week. Again, appreciate everybody on the board for the questions. And uh, we'll be back again next week. Until then, we out of here.